Welcome back to the last episode of the series. This video we'll be talking about the advanced backcourt footwork. So in the advanced backcourt footwork, I aim to help you bring your footcourt I aim to help bring your footwork to the highest level. Okay, so if you haven't already, you must, must, must watch the intermediate footwork as well as the beginner's footwork. Because if you haven't, uh, I think you'll not be able to follow us in this uh, episode, alright? So, watch those videos. This video will be here for a long time, so don't worry about it. Learn, practice, and when you're ready, come back to this video. So in this video, uh, for advanced footwork, what you need to understand is that apart from being able to do the techniques well, you need to be able to essentially use your energy very well because uh, in order to win a game, not only must you be you know, faster, stronger, uh, uh, smarter, you also need to be able to last throughout the whole game. So advanced footwork involves a lot about really, you know, to, to get your footwork to the highest level, it's really a lot about uh, efficiency. You know, being fast when you have to and, and maintaining, you know, pacing yourself when you don't have to be at maximum speed. So, we're gonna cover all of that and stay tuned, right? So, let's begin. Okay, the first is about bending your back. Um, it may sound insignificant, but this was taught to me by uh, Coach Luan Jing when I was in the national team. Essentially, what you have to do is at the backboard, doing your overhead, right? Instead of doing this, you need to bend your back. You see the difference? So this, uh, Bending back apparently helped me a lot when it came to uh, uh, essentially positioning myself. At the same time, it helped a lot. Sorry, it helped me get in position because I was able to get, you know, instead of this, the shuttle will be a little bit further, right? If I bend, I can actually reach the shuttle better. That's the first. Secondly, uh, it actually helped a lot. And, and, and what was it? Yeah, it helped a lot in getting myself into position. That's the first. And other than that, what else is there? Hmm, not much. Yeah, but it's a very important tip. And that's play a lot when I play a game, alright? So let me demonstrate once. And I, for this, I won't be playing a slow motion because there's a lot more content I need to cover in this video, okay? So normally, what you would do is like this. Right? Or if it's a fast shot. So now what I want you to do Bend your back. So it'll be like this. Okay? So that's the first tip. Okay, so the second tip is all about uh, your center of gravity, your body weight. Okay, so when you do the intermediate footwork, when you go back, right? One of the big challenges we face is that, uh, you know, remember that in, in the previous video I said you're going to uh, lean forward, right? Forward. Am I correct? So the problem with leaning forward is that your body weight, you're going against your body weight. So let me slow it down so you understand what I mean. If you do this, switch so and lean forward. And you're making it straight, right? You are going against your body weight. You notice my body weight goes down and I'm pushing against my body weight. So what this does is it takes a lot of energy off your leg and it makes it very straining as well as a draining, straining and draining for your game. So, as a result, uh, what happens is that you, you lose a lot of, it's essentially stamina. At the same time, it's not as fast. So what's the better way of doing this? You need to find this. You need to understand the concept of uh, essentially moving your body weight to make it efficient. So, picture this. Instead of going down and forward, right? Instead of down, like this, I want you to channel your body weight in a circular motion, kind of like, um, I think it's a very bad way to picture Tai Chi, but you try to imagine your body weight goes here, down, over here. So I try to exaggerate for you to see. So, this, back, right? I go forward. I'm going to lean forward. I go against my body weight. So what I want you to do is I want you to redirect your body weight. So if your body weight goes down, redirect it forward, alright? So try not to go against the body weight, like that. Okay, so when you cross over, okay, one more time as I demonstrate. Okay. I'm trying 
try to explain to you the concept. So if you do a forehand footwork at the back, right? Instead of going forward, lean down. Okay, so that's the idea. Of course, you don't have to exaggerate the, the movement as big as I as uh, drastically as I do. But I'm trying to teach you the concept. All right? So again, okay, the concept is moving your body weight forward. So if you would put it in practice, this is how it looks. Right? Even if the shuttle is very behind you, and then you know it's very hard for you to. I mean, of course, if it's a high ball, and then you go to the back, it's very comfortable. Go forward, right? But if you're going backwards, it's very hard to just move forward like that. So you need to bear in mind, body weight down, go. Okay? Okay, now I would like to go over another very advanced concept, which is essentially uh, you know, judgment of uh, the shots. Sorry, not judgment. How do I say? I would say adapting your footwork. So, uh, the concept of this is that in order to make yourself more efficient, like faster, at the same time, save more energy when you're doing your footwork, is you need to exercise judgment in uh, doing your footwork. And because of the context, modify your footwork. Meaning to say that if. Let me give you an example so that you understand, okay? Right, so remember the rule that after you do your footwork, you need to always try to move back to the center. Once you reach this advanced level and you're able to do footwork smoothly, now we need to rethink. Is it necessary to always return to the center? The answer is no. It depends on the context. So for example, if I'm in the forehand back corner and I attack, very dangerous smash, right? Or maybe not a dangerous smash. Uh, just, just this, this kind of smash. Right? I do a smash. And you know your, your opponent is in, it's out of the position. You can barely get by. Just taking the shuttle. And he likes to hit the shuttle. Like you know, block the shuttle. It doesn't make sense to do this. Then, it's a huge waste of it's, it's a huge waste of energy. So you notice that in this case, you see a lot of professional players. What they do is they modify uh, the base of their footwork. So the idea here is not about modifying where you return the center, but it's the whole concept of uh, modifying a footwork as necessary. Okay. So one example. So if I know my opponent like to keep a straight return, and or I can pressure them such that they cannot return a cross shot. What would I do is I modify my footwork to focus more on this corner instead, right? So in this case, my footwork will go off. This is now my new center. You guys? Saves me energy. At the same time, I can get there a lot quicker. In one step, instead of having to, you know, go back to the center, which takes more energy, and, and it's a further distance to get to the straight line, alright? So this is uh, modifying your footwork. At the same time, I mean, this could be applied to every single one of the footwork, not just the back court, but also in defense. So, for example, is it always necessary to stand here? Not necessarily. Sometimes you can stand a little to the left or a little to the right. So, you modify your footwork depending on the situation. And so, specific examples of modifying, uh, modifying your base. So, instead of, instead of returning back to the middle, for example, you can return over here. Apart from modifying your footwork, you also need to learn how to choose the best uh, footwork, the appropriate footwork for the situation. So for example, you know people like to do the high serve, right? So the high serve is all the way to the baseline, it's a very nice shot. And if it's a very nice shot, nice and slow, you are prepared. What do you do? You do a nice full jump smash. Right? Not necessarily right. So here's the problem with that. The reason being is that if you do a full smash, it's very draining and it's be and because it's at the court, at the back, your opponent is not going to struggle. I mean, assuming if you're an advanced player with advanced footwork, your opponent's going to be really strong. So the kind of shots probably wouldn't kill them most of the time. So if you waste a lot of energy, pretty much every single point, you do a full jump, BAM! What happens? You're going to waste a lot of energy and get very little result. Let me give you an example of how to choose the more energy-conserving footwork. So instead of doing, you know, the side jump, 
right? The, the, the block jump sideways, like this. Instead of doing the, you know, the foot jump where you go all the way down, use your this muscle to jump. This is very tiring, right? Another method, or one way you can modify the footwork is just to use your calves. You know this? The calves, right? I can jump really high with my calves. At the same time, I can last way longer doing this kind of jumps as compared to this kind of jumps, right? So, for example, if you're not doing this for the heel, sometimes it makes more sense to use the calves to jump back. So you do this. Instead of doing... That takes a lot of energy, right? So this one example of how you can, uh, use the block jump. Let's say you do this two work. My back pop will get out of position, right? But because you're a very strong player, and you know your opponent's pressuring you at the front, you want to open up the game, right? To, to, to bring the shuttle high so that you have plenty of time to, you know, try to, to attack again. So what you do? You lock a really high ball, right? Would it then make sense for you to do this? Doesn't make sense because you hit the ball really high, you have plenty of time, right? So in this case, what do you do? You modify your footwork. So one example of how players modify their footwork would be like this. Bah, high ball, they just walk back and get ready. Alright, so things like this would save you a little bit of energy here and there. So uh, by doing that, what you do is when you can, when you need to be fast, you have that energy and you have the skill to really go at maximum speed. And at the same time, uh, when you don't have to, you have the ability to you know conserve pace yourself. Uh, to be able to essentially you know, conserve and last throughout the game. Another key point to note when uh, you're trying to modify your football is you need to understand the habits of your opponent because ultimately you're playing against someone and if you know their particular habits, you can modify your uh, footwork according to their, you know, their habits. Because the problem with habits is that they die very hard. So habits die hard, for example, after you smash, they tend to like to leave your smash, right? In that case, instead of doing this, going all the way here, you can do a much smaller half step in order for you to save time and or to catch the second shot to go for a daily smash such that you do a small step then you do a dangerous shot, right? so instead of doing a full, sorry, a big side step you do a smaller side step with conserve energy so uh, two examples I already gave you the first was, uh, first was, what's the first one again? You tell me. So leave them down in the comments below. Well, I can't remember that right now. Okay, then. So how do you practice this? Um, one way you can do it is to watch a lot of uh, videos by the professionals and pay special attention to, the, to how they modify their football. And, the little little things uh, that they do. Let me give you an example of how uh, Li Zhongwei or Lin Nan modifies their football. then well, that's a beautiful control there from Chong uh, Wei so easy to uh, push that wide along it stays on the line it should be the Texas in the place with the so you get the idea they actually do modify their footwork so uh, you need to really reflect on your own game so uh, maybe you can do video recordings of your own matches and you know ask a friend or notice is there certain patterns that you can observe and how do you actually adjust your footwork to uh, capitalize on this opportunity so it's a lot of reflection thinking and innovation in, in, in essence of, of uh, you know modifying your footwork to capitalize on this uh, loopholes so the very last point is that 
you need to make sure that you are very conditioned to be able to do it very well. So what do I mean by this? Uh, that means strength and conditioning training. Uh, sadly, no matter how good your form is, if you don't have very strong legs, you just can't go very, very, very far. So sadly, you really need to train your physical fitness and strength. I mean, some of you may not like it, so that's why I say sadly, but if some, for those of you that love physical training, good for you, because this is where you excel. If you have very, very strong legs, very, very durable legs, lungs, at the same time, you also have very balanced, uh, very good balance, poor balance, right? And that helps a lot when you're doing footwork, because ultimately, apart from having the right form, the best ideas, you need to be able to physically execute. Okay, so of course I'm not going to uh, cover, give you exercise or how to do strength and conditioning because you need progressive training over the months, years, you know, to get there. And the last thing I want to say is that, you know, having been through these uh, three videos and having hundreds of hours of practice, I hope, I hope you've been practicing, uh, is that I want to say that it's okay to not have uh, a footbook that is perfect. You know, sometimes the food can be a little messy, a little bit inefficient, a little slower, but that's okay. If your tactics is sound, your game is, uh, your, your techniques, your killer weapons is dangerous, you need to score points, then it's fine, right? Nobody has, almost nobody, I would say, has perfect footwork. And that's okay. It's alright to mess up once in a while. Doesn't matter, as long as you can win the game, you win, okay? So, don't get too hard about perfecting the footwork. And bear in mind your game. Uh, to take care of your, you know, your techniques, your form, your uh, fitness, and your badminton as a whole. Again, I'd like to thank you for watching this video. If you haven't already, be sure to smash the subscribe button. Uh, don't smash it twice. Uh, and of course, I'm gonna take a short break for now. I mean, I will try my best to uh, actually, you know, post as much videos as I can. But because it's school holidays right now, and if you know, a coach got to do what a coach got to do. Organize camps, activities, competitions. So I'll be really, really busy. I'm gonna have my hands full, but I'll try to publish videos as soon as I can. Okay. So if I don't publish uh, uh, as regularly as before, please pardon me. I hope you understand, and I'll see you in the next series. Goodbye.